88.1 XFM, Tauranga's Hate Music Station, also another sponsored episode of Mike Time with Marty. Jets Car Grooming, all the way here from Tauranga. If you want your car spick and span, just go Jets Car Grooming. I have a musician whose debut album next to me is out now, so say hello to Ventura Black. Kia ora. So, um, first of all, how did you get started doing music? Uh, I, I think it was just uh, in high school, I needed... Uh, I needed something to do um, because I basically wasn't good at anything else. So <laughs> I, uh, I picked up a guitar in hopes that I'd get half a ride at that. And then I guess it kind of stuck from there. So I guess it was like 16 when I started. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I just tried to tried, tried to get good at something. And that's kind of really the only thing that properly stuck and actually uh, got somewhere. So yeah, pretty much just that really out of boredom. <laughs> Sweet. So uh, you were uh, interviewed by the one and only Cam Mansell, who has been on my show. What was that like? Uh, it was cool. Like Cam and I, um, we were already good friends before I did that interview. So it was kind of quite nice and easy to go into um, starting so, uh, starting the interview process with uh, someone that I was close with. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we've been hanging out now for like two or three years. So oh, maybe even three or four years, actually. We, we hang out quite a lot in the bars of Ponsonby and kind of in the same friend circles. So it's kind of, um, it's pretty easy to, they made it pretty easy to chat with them and, and do the whole process. I think we did the whole thing in one take. So it was, um, it was pretty easy to get everything done. And we were only there for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. Jeez. Yeah. All right. So next to me, your debut album, which is out now, uh, what does it feel like having a debut single? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Um, it's pretty different to what I thought it would be. Um, I kind of imagined that it would be more to do with the song rather than having to kind of pitch yourself. Um, I guess there's a lot more pitching yourself than the actual song itself. So it was, it was a bit confusing because I kind of spent all my time just working on the song. And then uh, I guess I didn't really realize how important the, the like personality and face of it was. So it's kind of just been a learning experience because a lot of people in this industry won't uh, often kind of just accept the song for its face value. They kind of want to have like a full story and a whole bunch of photos on social media and things. And mm -hmm. I guess I just never been like a big, I was never like a big social media person to start. And I guess I'm just kind of starting doing that now, now that I kind of have to because of the single. So it's kind of been a bit of a learning process because um, music for me has always just been about the sound of it. And it's mm -hmm. never really been, a, it's never really been like a big visual or personality thing. It's always just kind of been every song has got its own feel through just specifically the sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, are you ready to play the first game? Yeah, go on. Yeah, right. Kane. So on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate uh, thinking on your feet? How would I rate, wait, uh, rate what, sorry? Thinking on your feet. So like thinking on feet. quick thinking. Um, I would hope that that's one of, uh, the, like, I would hope that I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Um, I mean, I'm definitely better at nighttime right now than I am in the morning, so... Yeah. hopefully I have a, a one up on that if you'd asked me the first time that, that as soon as I woke up I'd probably be terrible <laughs> same here alright so I'm going to ask, um, ask you some basic questions and you just got to answer them as quickly as you possibly can okay Kane okay sweet um, if you could meet one celebrity who would it be me Lacunas alright summer or winter so, uh, winter alright All right. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 how would you rate your spice tolerance uh, like an eight. Like an eight. Okay, so if I was to give you this bottle of Tabasco, what would you do with it? Probably put it on pizza based on last night's uh, pizza that I had. First time I ever put Tabasco on pizza, but I really enjoyed it. Okay, uh, Pizza Hut or Domino's? Well, I wish, ideally neither, but probably Pizza Hut. <laughs> okay. Uh, Coke or Sprite? Coke. All right, summer or winter? I mean, sorry, everybody winter. else said. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, hot or cold? Cold. Okay, cool. Uh, if you could pick one place in the world to go visit, where would you go? Japan. Why? Um, I really enjoy the culture in terms of how they uh, kind of put like doing, they don't do things in halves. They do everything's 
about excellence and if you're going to do something you do it the best you possibly can without any compromise so i've kind of always been that way with my music and, and other things in my life and i guess it is respect they decided that if you're going to do any activity no matter how small it may be you do it with the 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 most like effort and precision that you possibly can mm-hmm. i quite okay. like that okay uh favorite musician uh ooh, favorite musician like right now like as of today it, it changes every day so, uh, at, right right now i think it would probably be bon Iver. okay okay uh mm. what's one song that you cannot get stuck out of your head um probably <laughs> unfortunately my own one <laughs> Hey, well, fair enough. You you gotta you gotta make sure that you know the lyrics and everything. Well, because it just it get, it just like everything that I do every day at the moment, it just keeps popping up because it's part of my work. So it's like it's kind of just always there. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's it's in my head, not by choice, but by by my everyday schedule. Yeah. Okay. And final question, which happens to be the most difficult question, according to the guests that have been on my show, where do you okay. see yourself in five years? hopefully alive (laughs) fingers crossed (laughs) like if i if i'm if i'm just alive that's gonna be like that's the benchmark and then anything above that is a bonus okay sweet (laughs) sounds good (laughs) all right so um when it came to writing next to me what was the thought process um well it started out with me using a loop pedal in my room during lockdown i think it was the first lockdown that we had it must have been it must have been one of the it was whatever it was one of the lockdowns that we had in 2020 and uh i'd imagine it was the first one because it took a little while to kind of get it going because we recorded it in february 2021 so um yeah it's, I, I was it was really just me in my room with a loop pedal sitting there kind of just looping the same kind of duck, 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 and just trying to come up with different melodies over that. And then I guess I kind of wrote like three different songs mm-hmm. uh, around that kind of feel and I was going to pick one of them. And then I couldn't really decide and they were all in different keys. So I kind of had to like count in down the steps till I'm up and up the kind of thing. And then I had the chorus and I had the like, the head keeps spinning bit, which comes later in the song. And they were all three different songs. And uh, I just kind of ended up changing all the keys and stuff. Then I was kind of like really stuck because each song kind of had a different meaning to it. There was like, out of those three, when I had to kind of blend them together, it was really interesting to write lyrics. So Next to Me is not actually written about anyone. It's Mm -hmm. actually written about um, someone that I'd like to meet that I haven't met. And uh, it's kind of, you know, like, I kind of wanted to make it so that it was not specific to one person so that it doesn't matter what your lifestyle is or what you're like what you perceive as you know a relationship or love or whether you've just met someone or it doesn't matter yeah I, I try I tried to make it so that it's kind of as interchangeable to every person's life or lifestyle or whatever whatever their interests are or whatever when it comes to um, intimacy or anything like that and I wanted to make it so that it could it could basically slot into everyone's everyone's mind and, and feel very fitting and very safe and and warm and um just made sure that everyone could relate so there's actually no there's no it's not there's no um there's no like gender specific lines in any of the song there's no nothing to do with like uh whether you're old or young or, or anything and uh also the song doesn't have i noticed on the pop charts that there's a lot of songs that try to sell romance or love or anything like that as uh as like a sexual thing Mm -hmm. and i guess i kind of wanted to try and break that without losing the intimacy Uh and the feel i kind of wanted to break that with uh lyrics that kind of don't really address directly that but they can kind of insinuate that that could be like a possibility so it's like the song's really about just trying to give someone making someone feel like they're the most important person in the world for just like that one evening and that you're the person that kind of curated uh, curated that mm-hmm. so yeah it's a it's a very it's a, it's a very like fantasy kind of head in the cloud song but i think it's very realistic and achievable for, for everyone that listens to it to feel like they could they could fit into that mold yeah okay so if you 
would just say who would be your biggest supporter um <laughs> it's funny because i have like <laughs> real, realistically i have this i have this running joke with a lot of people that i have like that I have like eight mums because <laughs> like because like I got my mom and then I've got like my best friend's mom yep and then like uh like some of the like some people that have dated their moms are like <laughs> to it. and then I have my music mom Ellie who's yep. like over in the UK um Ellie Ford and she's like she's like also just like another mom for me so like I guess my biggest supporters are all my various moms yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've got the same. Like, I live with my auntie and uncle. So, my auntie's like my mum. Mm. And then yeah. I've got like people that have helped me out throughout my career. They're mums. So, I get it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Shouts out to all the mums. Yeah. Shout out to all the mums. I do it for the mums. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. So, we did quick fire questions, but this time we're going to put a bit of a twist onto it. So, we're going to do okay. the same thing, but it has to be wrong answers only. <laughs> okay. All right, are you ready? All right, I feel like I feel like I'm going to be very good at this because this is just kind of how I do with questions every day. Oh, awesome! Okay, what's your name? Um, Reese. It's cool. How old are you? I'm. Uh, I've just turned fifty-six. Okay, sweet. Where about you from? Uh, I'm from Invercargill. <laughs> sweet. Um. Okay, what color's my hat? It's pink. Oh yeah, cool um what was i holding what am i holding right now a, b- a bottle of milk bottle of milk oh geez some spicy milk okay um uh let's go with uh what's the best thing about christmas uh that you get a fuckload of easter eggs sweet um okay what's the best thing about music um that it's 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 one of those things that you can only see you can't mm. hear it i like that yeah. It's just a visual thing. Okay, okay. Um, what color are my lights right now? Uh, I can't really tell. Is there any light on in there? I can't actually see any lights. I can't actually see you. Mm. Damn. <laughs> All right. And final one. Um, let's go with uh, how do you have your coffee in the morning? Uh, injected. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, Ventura, the roles are going to be reversed. You get to ask me some quick fire questions and I have to give you wrong answers only so you can be as difficult okay. as you want. Okay. Um, what does a rhino have above its nose? Uh, a hula hoop. I thought that too. Um, what is the best thing to rub into an open wound? Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> is it that kind of correct? <laughs> um okay um uh, what is uh what what letter comes between a and c in the alphabet four <laughs> um what is australia most well known for um just in Darden. <laughs> i can do this all day um <laughs> Okay, and uh, last last question. I'm going to do a big question now. Right. Um, name what what is the what is the Toyota Hilux uh, best known for? Uh, having one wheel. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> you passed. Appreciate the flying it. colors. All right. So, um, since you are a musician, I think we all want to hear you sing. So, I'm going to quick fire some uh musical icons and you've got to sing a song from that artist okay one sec i'm gonna close the door then no, no worries. i don't want to these these people put up with enough <laughs> enough of that enough of that from me it's <laughs> amy all right let me know when you're ready okay i'm ready all right justin timberlake uh so i gotta sing a song by one of these artists right yep okay uh senorita and I feel for you. You feel it, thanks. That you don't have to. Awesome. All right. Uh, Harry Styles. Uh, same lips red, same eyes blue, same white shirt, couple more tattoos. 
But it's not you and it's not me. Awesome. All right. Big time rush. Big time rush. <laughs> Dude. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's change it up then. Uh Pascal Musical. Um We're breaking free. We're sorry. Fly. There's not a star in heaven that we can't reach. Woo! All right. Uh Celine Dion. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> Every night in my dreams, I see you, and I feel you. That is how I know you. Go on. Awesome. All right, Queen. Uh, this thing called love, and I just I can't handle it. This thing called love, I must. Get around to it already. Breeze a little thing called love. Hey, all right. Let's go with um Grace. Grace, like the musical. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <laughs> um some loving had me a blast. Some loving. Having so fast, met a girl crazy for me, met a boy cute as could be. <laughs> there All we right. Go. All right, final one. Uh, pick one or two. Uh, let's go for two. Two. All right. Sing a song uh, about your crush. Sing a song about my crush? Yeah, but it has to be a song that's already out there. Like a song that you oh, yeah. would sing as a cover to your crush. Okay. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. The way you turn me on. I can't sleep. Let's run away and don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. Hey, awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, when it comes to writing music, producing music, what are the three things that you look for when it comes to a song? Uh, me personally? Mm-hmm. Okay. I would say, uh, but like, because I mean, like I, my, my current thing is learning how to, to produce and write pop music, whereas I used to do like jazz and metal and like all pretty much every genre that was not like radio pop so yeah. if i'm talking strictly about my kind of thing because like ventura black is a pop project i would say uh i would say uh bass and drums are the first and probably most important thing outside of the actual vocal and vocal melody um so you gotta like i guess probably the most work goes on the percussion and the and the bass line uh because mm-hmm. you, you kind of got if they're not dancing together those two parts then then the rest of your song is just gonna it's gonna melt and it's just gonna be like a puddle um the the bass and the drums are a uh they they're they're like the foundations of the song and everything you know it's like the backbone so the song's not going to stand by itself without bass and drums popping mm-hmm. right uh and then i guess another did you ask for three things yeah okay that's the first thing second thing would be that when you write lyrics you need to assume that the audience doesn't know what you're saying so it's kind of like for if someone has never played an instrument in their life the great thing about i think pop music is that everyone who speaks the language that you're singing in is going to be able to understand what you're trying to get over so um you kind of need to assume that no one understands what you're saying and then work from there and try and dress that up so the message is there and then you can dress it up how you want to dress it up but you need to make sure that it doesn't lose that sustenance of mm-hmm. what what a conversation is you know you need to be legible so that so that your listener can kind of feel like they're they don't have to work to get into the space of the song and then i guess the third thing is really just um you know making something 
that isn't yeah it's 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 just making something that uh is that you got to give the you got to give the listener a reason to not listen again really like you got to make sure you you want to you want to tick every box and you want to get every little bit of that popping so well that they got to try and ask themselves why they wouldn't listen. it's got to be like you got to give them every reason to keep listening to this song and mm-hmm. uh and if they can find a reason not to then you need to try again in your next but i guess with my music i try and make it so that it's it's hard to find a reason not to go back i try to tick every little box it's like a it's like a a meticulous like oil painting like every little square millimeter of that painting has to be so specific to the rest of it that it's mm. polished you know? all right so uh you posted on uh, instagram so sitting in the same spot i first sat in almost five years ago now when i first told chris uh chris met tech attack I wanted to be a solo recording artist. Now getting uh, now getting set in that same spot, playing the song we produced together feels pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So when you met Chris and you told him that you wanted to be a solo artist, uh, what yep. was that like? Uh, <laughs> it was funny. We were both very hungover. <laughs> um, I uh, I actually met Chris at an after party for a fashion label in a booth with his band. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, I'll i be honest with you, I didn't really know what was going on at the time because it was for, it was for Stolen Girlfriends Club and, uh, and I was in a, this little VIP booth by myself with this band of five guys and I didn't know really what was going on and I didn't know that they were 660 band. And uh, I kind of, ended, I think at one point in the night, I ended up asking them if they'd play any gigs or where I could get their music. <laughs> um which was kind of funny but then i chris was really lovely and he uh we, we, we were pretty pretty rinsed together but he was he said that i should come into his uh into his bar and play my music and he, he i don't think i don't think he remembered it at all but uh he did message me saying come into the bar on the night when we're hanging out and then i replied the next day and i think he was like oh shoot i've told this kid that like he can come in and play me his music so i better stick to it kind of thing so he's 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 a man of his word. He's always been quite lovely about stuff like that and supporting. So he let me come in and play my music for him in that same area there. And uh, that would have been, yeah, like pretty much around about five years ago. And um, that's when we first met. And then from there, it's really just been a process of trying to get me ready to be able to sing, <clears throat> be able to sing on, on tracks and write tracks that he can actually push. Some of my other stuff was a little bit just not really accessible i'd say to an everyday listener Mm -hmm. so he kind of taught me these skills on how to kind of make it easier for people to listen to my music without losing the integrity of being who you are as an artist Mm -hmm. so yeah it was just pretty it was it was real weird thinking that i was there at that spot and uh that was five years ago and then we produced that song last year and then sitting with it now out um was kind of strange and he was like you should sit there and film a little video of you playing it so that you can kind of kind of have that as a it's like a full circle kind of thing Hmm. okay awesome so i am politely stalking you which Hmm. is my job so i kind of have to um so you've got as one of the uh little splurges uh d-i-m-p-r-k what does that mean uh that's dream park they're a um they're a like a creative space uh near Newmarket, and um they were nice enough to let us go in there and do a shoot that i had with my photographer shelly and shelly is pretty much i have this thing about ventura black where i kind of really want to ensure that i'm using the same people for whatever their skill set is each time that i need that skill set so that it kind of feels like if we're all working it's just it's not it just i don't want it to be like a a one-time passover kind of thing i feel like if i'm going to grow as an artist i need to grow with the same team and if you have the people that are there with you from day one um that's you're, you're likely to just it just it just feels it, it feels weird to do things uh in an expendable way you just use someone and then let them kind of move on and do their own thing so 
Shelly, um, Shelly and Ezzy, my, my, my uh, photographer and my uh, filmographer, um, they sussed that, that spot for me at Dream Park because I think uh, Izzy, the filmographer, she was, uh, she was doing a, um, a shoot there the next day. So she teed that up for me, which was really nice because she wasn't part of the shoot, but she's uh, like another mum. She's another mum of the team. <laughs> um, just organising things for me and, and being very sweet and lovely and kind of trying to um, just look after me and stuff. So yeah, Dream Park is a, uh, is a creative space where you can do um, as far as I know, like like little film set things and uh, photo shoots, and I think they have they have this like a uh, neon coloured basketball court out the front, which is quite crazy and, and weird. And, and I think they're working on a new studio now because uh, there was construction going on when we were there on the other side of the building. So I think they're trying to expand, but it's definitely a cool place to check out if you're in Auckland for uh, creative spaces. Mm. All right, awesome. Well, Ventura, I'm going to give you the floor. Instagram, TikTok, everything. Let the people know what's going on. Okay, huge. Um, I've got uh, ins- Instagram and Facebook are both the, um, at this is Ventura Black. And uh, I've got, I need to get, that's funny because we would discuss that at the start of the interview is that I need to get TikTok going because again, I've, I've got a uh, social media is something that I'm just learning to really kind of take hold of. Um, but yeah, this is Ventura Black is the, the tag that I like to use for almost everything that I do on social media. And uh, yeah, definitely go out, listen to Next to Me on Apple Music, Spotify, it's on YouTube, it's on a bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, just let me know what you think. Definitely give me a follow and, and give me a message if you have any thoughts about the song. And uh, <clears throat> I should have a follow-up single coming coming out in the next few months too uh after we kind of um get get what we want to get out of this uh this track okay so yeah sweet well final question before we part ways if there could be someone that you know that you would like to see in your shoes on my show who would it be um i would say got to think of someone from Aotearoa that would be like a lot of fun. I want to think of a fun person. Uh-huh. What if uh, what if we did try it? What if it was what if it was Chris Mack, the producer from this song from next to me? What if we tried to tee him up? Have you interviewed him yet? No, not yet. I think if we got him in the right spot, I could go in there and we could it would be quite cool to for him to do the interview in his bar, well, before they open. Yeah. That'll be a fun one. I feel like he's he's someone that you would thrive on because uh, because all the questions and, and the style of your interviews, um, he's he's just too funny and too quick to uh, to pass up. <laughs> I think you'd have, I think you'd have an absolute ball doing uh, an interview with him. All right. Well, dude, what are you doing for the rest of the night? Because it's currently eight thirty New Zealand time. So, what are your plans for the rest of the day? I. <laughs> I need to be a good boy and I need to go to my room and I need to clean my room because it's an absolute pit and it never is. It's never a pit, but it's, uh, it's not, it's not feeling good right now. So I need to go in there and clean my room. And I think I'm just going to have a, a self care night of having a shower, clean my room. And then I'm probably just going to go and try and get into bed and get some sleep to be honest. Awesome. All right. Well, dude, thank you so much for taking your time. Congratulations on everything. I will make sure to send you the link so you can brag to everyone that you're on mic time with Marty. I don't think it means anything, but it's still something. So I love it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm into it. I'm always going to be into this. I'm never not going to be into it. Mike time with Marty. <laughs> oh, appreciate it, man. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, but until next time, uh, I will make sure to tell everyone to listen to next to me, probably do a little video on YouTube and TikTok and see what people think. So cool. Do it, I dare you. Oh, I, I plan on it. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, catch you later, man. Sweet. Too easy. See you.